Good morning, everyone. Um, come to bring you the Word of God this morning. And we're going to start out at reading Acts 2.38. It's my favorite Bible verse in the whole Bible. Well, anyway, um, I pray that Lord will anoint this Word and that y'all can receive it. Open your minds and hearts to the scripture reading this morning, starting out with Acts 2.38. If you would, turn to Acts 2.38 with me. Figure this out. Well, anyway, I can't get the uh, camera to work. I need, um, I guess... Uh, Someone knows what they're doing with phones. Well, anyway, I'll read. You turn with me to the books of Acts 2.38 this morning, if you have your Bible. Amen. Okay. Acts 2.38. Right. Acts 2.38. And then, um, then Peter said unto them, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, as the many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify, extort, saying, Save yourselves toward this untoward generation. I want to stop there. And um, save yourselves toward this untoward generation. We're living in perilous times. People are in wickedness. They are going and doing everything that's going to send them to a lake of fire and brimstone. And this place is tor a place of torment. It says over there in the book of the Bible, I'm not sure which verse, that there was a certain poor man. His name was Lazarus. He laid at the gate of beautiful daily. And a certain rich man stu ste uh, stepped over him every day when he would leave his place. The, the beggar would, you know, eat the crumbs or whatever, fall, fall from the table. But anyway, <clears throat> the beggar, Lazarus, he was sick. This man was wealthy. He did not feed him. And what happened was, when the uh, poor man Lazarus died, the holy angels carried him to Abraham's bosom. And then when the uh, rich man died, he was in hell. He looked up, and there was a great gulf fixed in between him and Lazarus. And he looked up to Abraham. He said, if you would send Lazarus to dip his finger and cool my tongue, the rich man said, I'm in torment. And, um, and the story is the rich man said to him, go, I have four other brothers so they don't come to this place. And um, I replied, they didn't listen to my prophets, and neither will they listen to someone that's raised from the dead. This guy is in hell, and he's going to be in hell all eternity because what he did. He stepped over the man at the gate of beautiful named Lazarus. And every day, rich ruler, he ate fine things of life 
And uh, Abraham said, Remember, thou son, uh, you receivest the th things you had received evil things. And now this man Lazarus is in Abraham's bosom. And uh, he's not in torment. The rich man is burning in hell 2,000 years ago or whenever, back in Jesus' day. He's there and he will remain there for all eternity. And he begged for Lazarus, told Abraham to send him so he could dip his hand, finger, in water to cool my tongue. I'm in torment. And if you're living and you have sin and you have addiction, you have problems with pride, and you're not right with the Lord. Hey Amen. If you hear this message, um, it says Acts 2.38, how to be saved. I just read the verse. Like if a woman, let's say they have cancer, and they go in remission. Well, it's like that was sin. You have to go in a state of remission from all your sin. When you do that, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You have to say, look, I'm fed up with this addiction, Lord. I'm fed up with this anger problem. I'm fed up, God, with my bitterness. Well, you know what? God can deliver you from that. I went through 10 years of backsliding. God was merciful. It was about four or five years ago at the first Pentecost church, North Little Rock. I was reading the Bible for about 21 days. I was fed up with sin. I was up to my wit's end. I was living with a drug dealer and there was people all throughout this house that were shooting up. People that were in wickedness, living in immorality. I picked up the word of God and I started reading it. You know, it touched my heart. It did something. And I, I didn't put that Bible down for 21 days. I was hungry for God. And I'm telling you, I went straight to that altar and I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, and it says in the Bible, those who are hungry shall be filled. Amen. You got to get hungry for the word of God. You got to want God to change you. There was a hard-hearted king, Pharaoh, where God led his people out of Egypt. He told Moses, in the burning bush on the mountain, he gave him specific orders to what to do. And Moses, he went and told Pharaoh, let my people go. Well, he came to Pharaoh seven different times, and each time he did not obey the man of God, God sent a plague. Frogs, blood, he caused the fish to die, all the firstborn of Egypt to die, and etc. But the man hardened his heart to the man of God. The word was from God. He came to deliver a message to you. Well, I'm delivering a message of hope to you this morning. If you're lost on your way to a lake of fire, brimstone, well, amen, you can get saved. You get in this word, you listen to the preaching of the man of God, and you you follow order and instruction. Make sure you do not harden your heart to the word of God and the preached word of God. It is more powerful than a two-edged sword. Amen. Thank God that I was convicted of my sin and uh I was 
filthy, unrighteous, undone. But God, when he was born of the Virgin Mary, says back in the book of John, that uh, the word was with God, the word was God, the word became flesh and dwelt among men. The God uh, that created all the universes and created all back in Genesis, it says, in seventh day he rested. His work was complete on the seventh day. And um, it was like in the days of Noah, and so shall it be like that when the Son of Man returns. People were given into marriage. People were marrying. People were buying oxen. In this one verse, God was at the house of the man, a Pharisee, I believe. He told him, go tell the people to come and eat. And one man started to say, well, I bought a piece of land. Another man gave an excuse. I was married, just got married. And then another came and he said something. But when God calls you, amen, you do not make up an excuse. I don't care. God's calling you. And if you harden your heart to God and to the messengers of God and the child of God, the ministers of God, the teachers of God, when you hear a message and we are preaching this truth to you and you reject it, that is a very dangerous place to be with God. The people in the Bible, there is another parable where a sower, it said, went to sow and he went to a far country, and he sowed word of God. And um, we and me, myself, I was born in it when I was four years old. Amen. I'm apostolic. I'm Holy Ghost filled. This word has been instilled in me since I was four years old. Amen. I've got to give an account of my stewardship one day when I stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And there is a book of life and a vision. I woke up in heaven. There was a beautiful crystal platform stand and it had a gold book on it engraved with a beautiful tree. And it began to open up in front of me in my dream. And I woke up. Do you want your name written in the book of life? Where you can walk down streets of gold? Amen. Well, if you're not saved today, receive God. Repent. And uh, seek, and you shall be filled. Seek after God. Get in this word right here. And seek and read those scriptures. Get hungry for God. And you shall be filled. Because I'm telling you, after 21 days of me reading this word, and I stepped, went to that altar, and I raised up hands. I submitted myself to God. It was like, bam, God came down. And it was like a fire that hit me. It was like a wind. I mean, it came in me, and I started speaking in other tongues for like 45 minutes. And ever since that day, it's been about five years, I have been working for the kingdom of God. Yes, and I, amen. I, I pray this message will touch someone's heart. I pray God will soften your heart. Lord Jesus, people who are hearing this message, Lord, and if you're hearing this now, ask God to soften your heart to this message so you can receive what the word of God this morning that I am bringing to you. There was a man in the Bible. His name was Nicodemus. 
He came to the Lord by night. He said, teacher, what must I do to be saved? This man was very spiritual. He gave all his money. He fasted twice a week, read the Bible every day. The man was not a sinful man, but God says you lack one thing, Nicodemus. If you're a Nicodemus out there and you've been to church all your life, well, I'm going to tell you, amen, if you're Baptist and Catholic and you're hearing this message, you must be born again of the water and spirit to enter the kingdom of God. I'm talking to everyone. Hey, hey Nicodemus, if you're spiritual and you think you're going to heaven for good works, you lack one thing, Nicodemus. You must be born again of the water and spirit. Hallelujah. If you search the scriptures, you will find you must be born again. There is one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. It's a commandment. God said here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. There are many religions out there that people are being led astray by false prophets and false doctrine. There is only one way to be saved, and you must be born again. If you're a Nicodemus out there today, and you're in church, you might be Baptist, Catholic, you might be uh, whatever. I'm telling you, the scripture says you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. Amen. I know the Catholics sprinkle a little water, but uh, over there in Acts 238, it says you must be born again of the water and spirit. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all sins. Back in the days of John, when he came in the wilderness preaching, he had eaten locusts and he had girdled and girdled his loins with leather and a belt, and he was a hairy man. They probably thought he was a wild man, but amen, I want to preach to you for a moment. That man was on fire for God. He was going through the wilderness saying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make this road straight. He was not the light that came in the world, but he was the one that testified of the light that was to come. He said, I'm not uh, worthy to loosen his sandal, but he shall come and he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John came baptizing with water. He said, there is one greater and mightier than I that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah, that is Jesus. Hallelujah. They were baptizing in the Jordan. When he baptized them, he took and he submerged them fully under the water. He didn't sprinkle them with a little bit of water. You must be submerged. Hallelujah. There is one God. If you write a check and you write Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they're not going to cash it. But Jesus. The name has to be applied. It says to be born again. It says in the uh, New Covenant, in the uh, four Gospels, then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus, everyone. Hallelujah. You got to have that name applied to your life, Jesus. And, um, and if I sent my kid with a check and it said, Father, Son, they're not going to cash it. It's got to have your name applied. Amen. The name of Jesus. It's got to be applied to you. I don't care if you're Baptist. When you hear this message, I, I strongly urge, and I feel in my spirit this morning, 
that you need to search them scriptures carefully, Nicodemus. Um, people who have not received because they're led away by false doctrine and false prophets. It said, you shall know them by their fruits. He said, they are my apostles. You should know them by my fruits. And the fruits of God is love, humbleness, joy, temperance, and so on, nine of them. But uh, this world is a huge harvest ground. The Bible is given to us it's instructions. It's a road map to the straight and narrow, it says. Those who are on a broad path is on a way to destruction. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that if you're on that broad path, you need to take a detour this morning. If you hear this message, I want to post it. You need to take that next detour in your life. The next bar you turn around and you're going to and you need to find you an apostolic church. There's an apostolic united over there in Sherwood, Donnie Copeland. Hallelujah. Drive to Sherwood. Visit the church. The truth is being preached. Amen. The truth is not in the bottle of a whiskey bottle. The truth is not in a club. You need to get to the church and be fed the word of God because I'm telling you there's a lake of fire and brimstone. Oh, Lord. God. It's a horrible, terrifying place. Amen. I don't no longer live for God, so I'll miss the lake of fire. I live for God because I love God. He's a merciful God. Hallelujah. God cannot be tempted by evil. But uh, where I'm getting out this preaching this morning, if you're on that broad path, if you're lost, if you're in sin, I strongly urge and to tell you my spirit, if you are hearing this message, you have time to turn around and make a detour. Do not go to that bar. Amen. Soften your heart up to the word of God being preached this morning. If you're hearing this message 30 years from now or 50 years from now, and I'm dead and gone, I'm telling you I'm in heaven, but I'm not there yet. I'm still preaching this message. And uh, if your kid's lost on the way to hell, you know what? You need to get saved so they can see the light of God in you. Set an example for your kids. Amen. But you need to take that next detour in your life this morning. Hey, that next bad thought or bad word it's fixing to roll off the end of your tongue. You need to you need to make a detour with your salvation. Ask God to soften up your heart this morning. You heard the word of God preached. I want to end this sermon and uh, pray with you, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that everyone that heard this message, Lord, that you will soften their heart, God, Jesus. Uh, God, and uh, God, and lead them with a strong hand, God, out of Egypt, out of sin, God, sin, deliverance, provision, Heavenly Father, Jesus, God, and uh, I pray that you get in a church, find you a, a church, it's Pentecostal, amen, it says in the Bible, um, Try to make this quick as I can. Some people have ADHD and other things, kids running, and you'll get disturbed. But in the day of Pentecost, when they was in the upper room, there was 120. 
and the sound of a mighty Russian wind came and filled in the house where they were all sitting. And on each of them were like a clothing tongues of fire set on each of them. But amen, God is pouring his spirit out upon all flesh. We're in the end days. But you got to receive God. Ask him, soften my heart, Lord. God, work in me. Work in my spirit, God. Hallelujah. I pray in Jesus' name. I'm going to let y'all go. And uh, I will make a preaching video two or three times a week, maybe more. If God puts something in my heart, I will share with y'all great folks out here on the internet that are listening to this message. God bless you, and I want to let you go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.